Take you live now to Queen's Park, where Ontario NDP leader Marge Stiles is reacting to the resignation of Steve Clark as housing minister over the Greenbelt controversy. Let's listen in. all he wants, but it doesn't change the fact that Ontarians are fed up with a corrupt government rigging the system. To help, by the way, just a select few of their insider friends get even richer and at the expense of everybody else. With this new hastily assembled team, he has even less of a reason to delay recalling the legislature. We should be back in the legislature today. Uh, and uh, the reason we need to do that is so that we can restore the land back into the green belt. It's time that Mr. Ford faced the music once and for all, and we are going to use every tool at our disposal as your official opposition NDP to make sure that this government recalls the legislature and eventually restores the land to the green belt. And then we're going to keep pushing to uncover just how deep this government's corruption actually runs, because Ontarians deserve so much better than this. And with that, I'm happy to take your questions. Um. If uh, the Premier, he's talking in, I guess, 25 minutes, mm -hmm. if the Premier doesn't uh, announce that he's putting, he's going to rethink or redo the green belt process, what does that say? Uh, well, it says to me that he hasn't gotten the memo, <laughs> you know, like this is uh, what Ontarians want to see. Ontarians are very, very angry. Uh, most Ontarians, I think, were very angry before the scandals e emerged. They knew something didn't smell right. And ultimately, they know that we need that land for important, absolutely crucial farmland and also those important ecosystems. And they also know, and they have never bought uh, what Mr. Ford is serving, that this is about the housing crisis. This is not and has never been about solving the housing crisis. Uh, so I think if he doesn't uh, immediately today announce that he is going to be restoring all of that land to the green belt, uh, then he just isn't getting the message uh, that Ontarians have been sending him and that we have been raising every single day, uh, certainly since these reports came out and going back to the initial plans uh, to carve up the green belt. What do you make of the choice of Paul Calandra as the new uh, housing minister? Well, uh, first of all, I would say that Mr. Calandra, his role in this government seems to be just simply to divert attention and distract. Uh, I don't see him as somebody who's going to actually uh, build the housing that Ontarians need, and I don't think Ontarians uh, will trust him to address the affordability crisis um, in in our in our in, in Ontario right now, um, we need housing solutions that are going to actually address that missing middle, that are actually going to address the affordability crunch that we're seeing in this province. And I don't see Mr. Calandra addressing those things. That certainly hasn't been our experience with him so far. Well, what are your suggestions then for that? Oh, we've been we've we've had lots of um, we've introduced legislation. I mean, we have many solutions out there, but um, I think foremost, um, we need to actually start to have get the government back in the business of building a truly affordable housing again in this province. Um, uh, we need to um, address you know introduce real rent control. Uh, we need inclusionary zoning. Right. I mean, there are report after report after report that serve up a menu of options, none of which include carving up uh, the green belt. Uh, the solutions are there. Municipalities, it, for the most part in this province, have approvals ready to go. You know, what we need is for the government to actually start to pay attention to this crisis and take action, real action, not just simply carving up our province uh, to create more sprawl and more luxury housing uh, to gift their friends with, uh, with uh, these billion-dollar deals. Make of the the disarray we've seen that we've seen Clark hang on for th three four weeks two very bad reports. Uh, the last one comes out Wednesday. He says he's going to hang on. He comes out Thursday. He and the premier both say he's going to hang on, and then all of a sudden Labor Day, he's gone. So, what do you make of that? Is this a government in complete chaos? You know, I think this government is in chaos, um, and I think that the corruption runs deep. And I think that's why uh, the Premier has avoided 
uh, kicking out Mr. Clark until now or Mr. Clark resigning. Uh, we don't even know the full scope of the corruption yet, but we do know it runs deep. Um, we know that the premier refuses to share his records. Uh, we need him to come clean with Ontarians. Um, and I think in the next few months, we are going to continue to be uh, examining very closely uh, other deals that this government has done. Uh, there's going to continue to be a lot more scrutiny. And, um, you know, this, uh, as I said earlier, he can shuffle the deck chairs uh, all they like to. But at the end of the day, it is, uh, it is the premier himself who needs to answer to Ontarians, and he needs to come clean. Do you see these changes, you know, a new minister, a new parliamentary assistant, a new chief, uh, chief of staff to the Ministry of Housing, do you see that that could be maybe a fresh new outlook on housing? Well, you know, I would say that, again, you know, we know that the direction came from the very top. Uh, according to two uh, independent officers, right, uh, we now know uh, very clearly that the Premier's own mandate letter, which he has tried to keep secret, by the way, uh, which he has hidden from Ontarians and even gone to court to try to hide, uh, but his own mandate letter directed them uh, along these lines. And so, uh, and, and we know, we also just still do not know the extent of the Premier's full involvement in all of this. So I think until we uh, have full transparency and accountability from this Premier, we're not going to really see any significant change because at the end of the day, the, the, the issue is with this government. It's, it's with this government and their, their focus, which has never been on addressing the uh, issues of Ontarians. It's always been about making sure that their friends got richer and the wealthy got wealthier. And so I don't have any confidence uh, in this government. I'm, I think, you know, I'm, I'm glad Mr. Clark finally took responsibility and stepped aside. But uh, I will not be satisfied uh, until we really get to the bottom of that. And the first step and the most important step right now is recalling the legislature so that we can return the land to the green belt. And let me be absolutely clear. The government can accomplish some of that in regulation, but we need the, the legislature to return so that we, we can actually pass legislation um, so that those developers um, have less of a foothold. In, in how that's going to take place, right? It's really critical that legislation be passed to return the land. Do you think that this one mandate letter to the Minister of Housing was yeah. the one letter that made the government say, we're going to keep them all secret? Or do you think that there's more no. that they Absolutely not. We're seeing the, you know, privatization of public health care in this province, uh, education. Uh, we have multiple, you know, infrastructure deals. Uh, people in this province know something doesn't smell right. Um, the, the government is opening up, you know, the provincial coffers, right, to private interests. And so, to me, that means that that was mandated. That was absolutely mandated by the premier himself. People in this province have a right to know what's going on. Um, corruption at this level is deeply concerning to Ontarians. And... I believe it runs very deep in this government. And so it taints everything they do and everything they have done. So uh, those mandate letters need to be made public. Absolutely. We've always said that. But again, my number one priority right now, and as we've been saying every single day, the premier must return the land to the green belt. It's the first thing he needs to do, and it's extremely important. Ms. Stiles, would you be comfortable uh, saying a few things in French about Paul Calandra's nomination as uh, Minister of Housing? Yes, I would, but if you don't mind, I have a separate note that I'd like to use for that, but I can do some questions en français avec toi, okay? Um, you, one of the things that it has, people have been talking about is the idea that if they return the land to the green belt, the developers who have already started making plans for this property would sue. Uh, you've mentioned that uh, right. you, you meant called for passing legislation. Do you, would you support legislation that return, not only returns land to the green belt, but also prevents developers hmm. from suing? Well, I think legislation will make it, as I understand it, the legislation will make it difficult for, more difficult for developers to have that foothold to sue the government. Um, but geez, you know, uh, 
this is this is the path we always see this government go down. They they canceled those those wind contracts. They don't care. They don't care how many people they step on or how much it costs the people of this province. They just make their deals and then they 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 let people sue them and they end up paying out of out of uh, uh, government coffers to cover their trail. You know the the drap in particular. The return of that land requires legislation. That's why the, the legislature has to return. Uh, they can't just do it in back rooms in regulation. It won't be good enough. But yeah, they have left this province once again uh, open to being you know, sued by developers uh, because they never do things properly. And that's what happens when you have corruption like this. At the end of the day, someone pays the price. And you know who it is usually? It's the people of the province. It's the taxpayers of this province who pay the price for this government's uh, missteps and corruption. What do you th think about um, uh, Minister uh, Mulroney being shuffled out of transportation? Well, we've been calling for the minister's resignation for uh, some time now over her um, over you know many. Um, many issues, including, of course, uh, the disaster of Metrolinks, um, the Eglinton Crosstown, the Ottawa LRT, um, situation after situation that she has mismanaged uh, badly. So uh, I don't think, given her track record, that we can trust her to manage the treasury of this province, and I don't think Ontarians do either. More confidence in Mr. Sarkaria handling the transportation file? You know, I, again, it, my concern is with the government <laughs> themselves, the direction they've been given uh, by the Premier, their lack of uh, concern over these significant um, allegations of corruption. We are going to see more investigations coming out. I am going to use every tool we have in the toolbox uh, to, and I know that we will maybe even seeing an RCMP investigation, but I think that, you know, with the scope of the, the corruption and collusion uh, in this situation, uh, it calls into question all kinds of other deals, particularly, you know, in big infrastructure deals. And so, um, you know, and I, as I've already explained many times, my concerns about Metrolinx. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have a whole lot of confidence uh, that Mr. Sarkari is going to make any difference there, unless, unless the, you know, unless we have uh, uh, responsibility taken at the top and real change in mandate and direction. And I, I honestly think so many of these deals are going to end up having to be reviewed now. Mm -hmm. But Mark, isn't so much of what we've seen in these two reports. Revealed. We've been listening to Ontario NDP leader Mark Stiles uh, speaking to reporters reacting to the resignation of Housing Minister Steve Clark. Uh, she called uh, the Ford government a corrupt government rigging the system. Uh, she's demanding that uh, Premier Ford recall the legislature and pass legisl uh, uh, legislation uh, to restore the land back into the Greenbelt.